we're going to illustrate how to solve a system of linear equations using Gauss-Jordan elimination. In this example, we have three equations with three unknowns, x, y, and z. We've eliminated the x, y, z, and equal sign from each of the equations and created the matrix that you see. Keep in mind that the first row of that matrix, 3, negative 8, 2, 7, corresponds to the equation 3 times x minus 8 times y plus 2 times z equals 7. And similarly for the second and third row of this matrix. Our strategy is as follows. We're going to want to eliminate the x from the second and third equation. What that means is that we want to get a 0 where the 1 and 2 are in the first column. That process is called pivoting. And what we'll be doing first is pivoting on the number in the first row, first column, the number 3. That number 3 will stay the same, and the numbers 1 and 2 will both become 0. We'll be changing rows 2 and 3 so that those new rows 2 and 3 will contain a 0 where the 1 and 2 circled are. To get the new rows 2 and 3, we will have to apply row operations. The row operations will appear to the right of the matrix. They'll look something like what you see. Number times row 2 plus or minus another number times row 1. That'll be the new row 2. Number times row 3 plus or minus another number times row 1 will be the new row 3. I'll explain more in detail what that means in the upcoming slides. Notice that after pivoting on the number in the first row, first column, that the first row doesn't change. The second row and third row begin with 0, and all the other numbers will change because of the row operations. We next want to pivot on the number in the second row, second column, and hence we want to get a 0 above and below it. What we're doing now is eliminating the y variable from the first and the third equations. The row operations used to accomplish this task again appear to the right of the matrix. You see that the numbers in the first and third rows have now changed. Finally, we want to get a 0 in the first and second row of the third column essentially eliminating the z from the first and second equations. This process now is pivoting on the number in the third row, third column. The row operations that will yield that result now appear to the right of the matrix. This system will have a unique solution if the numbers along the main diagonal are not equal to zero. None of them can be zero. We begin by pivoting on the number 3 in the first row, first column. We're going to change row 2 using row 1. Since the numbers 3 and 1 have the same sign, we subtract to get 0. The least common multiple of 3 and 1 is 3. We multiply the 1 in row 2 by 3 and then subtract the number 3 in row 1. Next, we want to change row 3. We change row 3 using row 1. Since the numbers 3 and 2 from the pivot column have the same sign, we subtract to get 0. The least common multiple of 2 and 3 is 6. So we multiply row 3 by 3 and row 1 by 2. This one time, let me show you how you get the results of these row operations. 3 times row 2 is 3 times 1 equals 3. 
3 times a negative 4, which equals a negative 12, 3 times a negative 1, which equals a negative 3, and 3 times 5, which equals 15. Subtracting row 1 is equivalent to multiplying row 1 by a negative 1, and then adding. So negative row 1 is just negative 3, 8, negative 2, and negative 7. We now add those two rows, and you see you get the numbers 0, negative 4, negative 5, and 8. That's the new row 2. Similarly, 3 row 3 will give 6, 0, 3, 24. And when I take away 2 row 1, that's simply multiplying row 1 by negative 2, giving negative 6, 16, negative 4, negative 14. And then adding the results, giving 0, 16, negative 1, and 10. Remember, 3 row 3 minus 2 row 1 is the new row 3. So here's the matrix that results after pivoting on the number 3. We next pivot on the number in the second row, second column. We will change row 1 using row 2. Since the numbers in rows 1 and 2 have the same sign, we will subtract. The least common multiple of 8 and 4 is 8, so simply multiply row 2 by 2. Now change row 3 using the pivot row, row 2. The numbers 16 and negative 4 have opposite sign. And so, to get 0, we're going to add. Now multiply row 2 by 4, and that'll give a 0 where the 16 is. Here's the matrix that results after pivoting on the number negative 4 in the second row, second column. Notice that all numbers in row 1 are divisible by 3, and all numbers in row 3 are divisible by 21 or a negative 21. So what we're going to do is divide row 1 by 3 and divide row 3 by a negative 21, reducing the numbers in the matrix. While this step is not necessary, it can significantly reduce the complexity of the calculations. And finally, we want to pivot on the number in the third row, third column. And so we want to get a 0 where the 4 is and a 0 where the negative 5 is. We're going to change rows 1 and 2 using row 3. Here are the row operations and the final matrix. Notice that the final matrix does have the form that we want. All numbers along the main diagonal are not 0, and all other numbers in the columns x, y, and z are 0 where they should be because of the pivoting. Recall that each row of the matrix is really an equation. For example, if you go back to the top, you see that 3, 0, 12, negative 9 gives the equation 3x plus 0y plus 12z equals negative 9, or 3x plus 12z equals negative 9. Coming down again to the bottom, the first row, 1005, is an equation 1 times x plus 0 times y plus 0 times z equals 5, x equals 5. Similarly, the next 
Rho gives 0 times x minus 4 times y plus 0 times z equals negative 2, or negative 4y equals negative 2. Last row is 0x plus 0y plus 1z equals negative 2, which yields z equals negative 2. The solution to this system is x equals 5, y equals a negative 2 divided by a negative 4, or a half, and z equals negative 2.